Well, joining me to discuss this and the major political events of the year is the political commentator and reporter, uh, Georgia Gihuli. Thank you, Georgia, for joining us. Um, first of all, let's start with the, the news today, and it does tentatively seem to be quite positive. Yeah, in terms of actual health, it's very positive. And also, we know anyway that the impact of Omicron was always going to be less than, say, Delta and other variants before that, because obviously most people in the UK are vaccinated. And also most people, sort of um, working age people, are at a low risk from COVID anyway. But anyway, this is good news. Um, <laughs> the problem is that sort of the people who've been calling for tighter restrictions throughout this, their argument is obviously that we don't know exactly how this could play out. Okay, that things. So it could place some um, pressure on the NHS. The problem here, I think, is actually not the Omicron variant is a really, really dangerous disease. Obviously, the evidence doesn't doesn't show that. I think that the issue is with the NHS, we have a tremendous amount of pressure because it's sort of been um, mishandled over many years. There are staff shortages. It's already um, very much struggled to deal with past winter flu epidemics, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that the issue is whether or not this is mild, will it still place pressure on the NHS? Yeah, indeed. And of course, that is some of the factors the Prime Minister will be taking into account. But there is a sense, isn't it, that at the moment, looking at this data, provisional data, but still data, that Conservative MPs are not convinced for the need for further restrictions. And that essentially hems the Prime Minister in, doesn't it? Um, to a certain extent, it does. However, you know, many of these MPs uh, obviously did oppose um, the plan B restrictions. However, before that, overwhelming majority of them uh, supported other restrictions before that um, because they were sort of persuaded that it was for the necessity of the NHS in particular. And also we know that Labour will probably support further restrictions, though Keir Starmer has actually not called for, um, you know, a post-Christmas lockdown or anything like that yet. So I think it's very interesting to see where we go because... On one hand, we could see sort of MPs pull together again and say, oh, you know, OK, we don't really like this, but let's do it because we feel that we need to blah, blah, blah again. Uh, or we could see um, actually Labour and backbench Tories be against it, which would be a very interesting place to be in. Fascinating as well, of course, that, you know, England, yet again, a bit of an outlier in all of this compared to other parts of the UK, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, uh, but also to other parts of, of Europe, though, in essence, if things stay as optimistic as we frankly hope, this could be good political news for Boris Johnson that he hasn't introduced restrictions when potentially they weren't necessary politically. Uh, it could be quite a good start to 2022 for the Prime Minister. Yeah, I mean, my main concern is obviously um, what's good for, for um, the majority of the country rather than what's good for Boris Johnson. But I agree with you. Um, absolutely. It would probably be good for him in the long term if if this does turn out to be mild, which it probably will, let's be realistic, and he hasn't implemented restrictions for no reason. However, it's funny because right now you do have sort of massive hordes of people in reality and, you know, in the Twitterati, the Westminster Bowl, calling for more restrictions. Um, and actually polls show sort of, it's sort of like in the high 40% uh, of the public, uh, or adults rather, <laughs> calling for um, further restrictions. So it's interesting to see, I think, I doubt, you know, the next election are going to be people, uh, there's going to be people who are saying, let's say if Omicron was mild, saying, you know, you should have implemented further restrictions anyway. So I think that is not going to be an issue. Yeah, if anything, it will be positive if they don't respond heavily when it's not necessary. However, you know, the long term impact of, of previous policies, we're already seeing them right now. Obviously, to an extent, it's a global issue with supply chains and interest rates and, and all that jazz. Um, but we are seeing, you know, in the UK, um, interest rates uh, really soaring, the cost of living soaring. And um, the problem is that obviously inflation is good when we but people's wages are not rising with that. So I think the economy um, is going to be a big issue in the next election. And I think that Boris and his uh, ministers, obviously the chancellor in particular, will face the heat for that, whether or not, you know, how they respond to this, to this, uh, to this specific variant, I think is not as important as what's already happened. <laughs> No, indeed. And of course, it could inversely work the other way, which is that if hospitalisations do increase dramatically, many people may well ask questions about why, the, why in England uh, the Prime Minister didn't react uh, 
quicker. So it's finally balanced, to quote Boris Johnson himself. George, just stay there for the time being, because you touched upon some of the big political challenges facing the Prime Minister. Let's bring back Georgie back in again. Uh, what have your highlights and lowlights been? I have to admit, a low light perhaps of today um, is now having to have rewatched again that clip of Matt Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how you would say it, uh, embroiled in, a, in an intimate uh, exchange against a doorway. Um, gosh, I mean, in terms of the low lights, Possibly one of the first things you show, which is something we obviously cannot blame British uh, ministers for, um, the Capitol Hill um, riot or storm in Capitol, however you want to call it, um, in the US uh, very, very early on in the year. I think this year has been so so long, you always forget that that happened uh, this year. Um, I think that it was just an absolute disaster. I mean, people obviously have very uh, sort of divided opinions on say Donald Trump and Joe Biden, et cetera, and US politics in general. But I think that, um, you know, the idea of this huge uh, group of people um, invading basically the, the seat of the legislature in the United States of America, you know, the currently still the global superpower, the biggest democracy, the oldest democracy uh, to some extent, um, trying to, um, change or stop the results of um, an election, I think was, um, I think it was very uh, sad to see. Um, I do agree that um, the US obviously has some issues with voter fraud and mail-in ballots and that kind of thing. And I think they should always be pursued, you know, legally and, and in a free way. Um, however, I think what you saw here was um, some political actors sort of egging on these people to, um, to take action where I don't think it was appropriate to do so, you know, the Congress in America as well. They're basically, you know, counting, verifying um, state votes. So these are votes that have been approved by um, the electoral colleges in the various states um, to verify Joe Biden's uh, election as president. Um, you know, Congress doesn't decide, you know, <laughs> the legal outcomes of whether there was voter fraud in this area or whether there was um, unfair antics in the certain area. So I think, you know, it's not even the appropriate place to protest, really. Um, I'm assuming that the people who um, decided to go there, I think it's probably just a symbolic thing. Like, for example, you might protest outside the Houses of Parliament when it's not actually something that MPs would be involved with, just because it's sort of an iconic um, image of, of that city or of that country's uh, system. So I'm assuming that's what it was. And, you know, unfortunately, um, people were injured. Um, people were sort of... Um, stuck inside, fearing for their lives. Actually, a few of the police officers uh, who were involved in it uh, yeah. committed suicide afterwards. Yeah, and indeed, of course, there is uh, an ongoing investigation, isn't there, by uh, Congress into that. Uh, Georgia, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Merry Christmas to you and uh, to your loved ones. Uh, Georgia Gilhooly there joining us to look back on some of the highlights and lowlights of uh, the year. Let's